Thank you for your toilet paper talk. <laughs> Are there any questions this afternoon? Yes. <laughs> I was wondering if you could tell us about um, how your journey of how you uh, met Zen and Master Sun Sun and decided to come and become a monk. How, how did that happen? It's not that interesting. <laughs> 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 oh, I've been practicing meditation for a long time and then I saw a poster for uh, a Zen talk at, at a university I used to work at. And the person giving the talk was Zen Master Sung Son. So it's just kind of like, uh, you, know, you know how things just happen, right? Like logs roll down hills and toilet paper runs out. So those kinds of things happen if you uh, are fortunate and probably even more important if you're paying attention uh, you can learn from it and it'll point you in a particular direction I don't know why anything happens yeah that's why we teach don't know so uh, you're all fortunate to encounter a particular style of teaching which is quite good in my opinion <laughs> Because I've definitely heard, I was practicing um, in schools that uh, weren't as clear as the Kwan Um School of Zen. So uh, that impressed me at first. You know. That's why we emphasize together action practicing too. It's because of com compassion. So you aren't trying to get something for yourself, you're doing it with other people. even practicing with other rolls of toilet paper. So that kind of, that style of teaching, it isn't the end of the world, but it does point you in the right direction. So I had been practicing a kind of, uh, I don't know what it would be, like a kind of um, a self-involved kind of meditation style. And it wasn't exactly clear why you were doing it. You know, if you're doing it for yourself, obviously that isn't going to work. And so uh, I was Im impressed by this um, uh, together action, Kwan Um style of uh, teaching. So that's why I started doing that. I did not plenty of the other stuff, but all of us have done plenty of the other stuff. So if you uh, learn from that, you'll, you'll continually be like digging yourself out of this self-involved hole to get to something else. But you use that self-involved, that suffering that comes from self-involvement is also teaching you. Right? It's not good or bad. At first you think it's good and maybe it'll work and then you think it's bad and then blah, 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 blah. But underneath that, there's always this like uh, uh, wisdom, this don't know wisdom emerging. So I, it's all like, it's a long time ago. I can't actually remember very well. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> what? How old was you? How old was I? I think I was. Uh, well, let's see. I was 36. Yes? <laughs> What's the most important thing to learn from Sinsansin? Don't attach to anything, just do it. Become one. Then out of that emerges what we call wisdom. You know, but wisdom isn't, it's before thinking uh, wisdom. And that comes from just chasing the log down the hill.
I know that I was uh, fed up with uh, learning things, you know, studying to get stuff. <laughs> That's a wonderful enterprise. <laughs> Any other questions? What is the main principle of Buddha Dharma? No principle. Yeah, mainly it's about not attaching to anything and just paying attention in all the different ways that we pay attention in, in before thinking. So even if you think you weren't there, you were there. So that's a, like your don't know mind, your just do it mind. So you have your think it mind. And the think it mind is not good or bad. The problem is that we get attached to it. So uh, what we call before thinking also involves thinking. It's just before thinking, thinking, which means non-attachment thinking, which means just do it thinking, which means thinking is part of what we do as human beings. Right? So uh, the question is, how do you use that to help the world? And you are part of the world too. So it's a win, a win-win situation. That's what I like about Zen, there's no losing. <laughs> you may think you lost, but underneath there, there's something else going on. So that's why you don't want to attach to any of your ideas about what you think is going on. So this, this, this floor is not heated, right? Or is it? <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> when I think about stuff rolling down hills, I always think of the uh, the rockhead monk. You know, and he can't do anything when he when he, you know, like maybe he's injured or he's stupid. He he flunks out of the sutra class. He he can't do Zen. So they have him just uh, carry wood down from the hills to heat the temple. And he's going down the hill and he slips and falls and his shoe comes off and comes down and hits him on the head. And then boom, he wakes up. So that's a, that's a cool technique. <laughs> Hit yourself on the head with a shoe. And the Sixth Patriarch, probably the, most, the second most famous Buddhist there is, right? He's just carrying wood into, uh, he carries wood, he's selling firewood, and he comes out of the shop that he just uh, sold a load of firewood to, and he hears one line out of the Diamond Sutra, when thinking arises in your mind, don't attach to it. So he didn't spend any time in Kilche. <laughs> so it's about this spontaneous native wisdom that we all have inside of it, and how do, how do you let it out? So everybody's attached to some form of I, my, me. So if you can just let go of that for a second, then something else appears. But you don't always believe what appears. So if I hit somebody, then she got it. But then you think, well, why, why did he hit me? Yes, why did you hit me? Why, that was a mistake. <laughs> but everybody went. You know, everybody wants something, right? So you just let go of that for a second, then everything is just as it is. And that's it. Hello. <laughs> right. So that's why 
uh, Zen Master Sung Sung always taught, like, I don't want anything Buddhism, which we call don't know, or just do it, or has all kinds of names. Probably has a jillion names. <laughs> Yes. That's right. Then don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. It's also just do it. <laughs> it comes. There's many different styles. <laughs> yeah. Like if you're sitting there waiting for the bus to go into town, what do you do? <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, it's always just now. There isn't any past or future that's just made by thinking, right? So that means that the only time that you can actually practice is right now. So we call that just now mind or moment world. You know? So that's where we really live, although we can think about all kinds of other stuff, right? Like those two guys on the end can think about Poland and I'm not telling you what he thinks about. <laughs> he thinks about what I think about. <laughs> so, and then there's two Russians, you know, and then there's two Koreans, uh, three Koreans. And then in the middle there is a, a Malay person. So all, all, all of us think about this world differently, but we all live in the same world. So if you, you detach, you can live in this moment which is where we actually live, but we think we live somewhere else. And we're definitely attached to thinking about living somewhere else. <laughs> but this is it. Pretty exciting, huh? <laughs> so it's always about waking up just now. So that's why we call meditation a just now mind. Pretty simple, and nobody likes to hear anything that simple, so we're always generating new and interesting explanations of this. <laughs> but they all point towards one thing, which is wake up just now. And in this moment, whether it's picking up a newspaper or putting the second roll of toilet paper back, this moment will tell you what to do. And then you just do it. And that's all you can say about it. But everybody knows what it is. Amazing. <laughs> yes? <laughs> like what you say, like we kind of understand. But always, like I find, like for myself, is uh, is kind of like I forget it at some point, and mm -hmm. then I just do whatever I used to do, and then then I hear, eh, I should do like this. Yeah, that may be okay. Everybody's always checking, right? Mm -hmm. Checking, checking, checking. That's because you're attached to like and dislike. That's why we check. It's natural. It's not good and not bad. You just have to let go of it, that's all. One reason I like this uh, hit on the head with a shoe thing, <laughs> or you <laughs> looking at the log rolling down the hill, going to kill somebody. What if there was a a Sunim getting kimchi out of that pot just as that thing rolled down the hill. So <laughs> you know, you're always, always checking on things, but, then, but the only thing, place you can do anything is right here, right now. This is it. Maybe boring, you know, like he's yawning, he's laughing, and she's bored stiff. So <laughs> but that's it. That's all we got. You don't have anything else. So that's what Zen Master Sung Sung called moment world. We live in moment world, but we 
think we live somewhere else. You know? Like next week, he and I go to Japan. So th- this morning, I was thinking about going to Japan. And I, well, that's ridiculous because they can't do anything about it until we get going to Japan. <laughs> I mean, it's not ridiculous to think about it. You have to think about it, but to attach to it, you know. So you might be nervous. Are you nervous about going to Japan? Mm-hmm. Yeah, me either. <laughs> and even being nervous about it, that's not a problem. Just don't attach to being nervous. Nervous is the truth. Nervousness gives you wisdom, sure. Any other questions? Yeah. So, years ago, when I was living in PGC, yeah. and uh, we were in Kyoto, and the swimming was guiding teacher and master. <laughs> I think I was probably head, head monk. <laughs> and then you one time told me, uh, then my son said, Maybe, maybe you thought I, I was bored during Kyoche. Actually, it's a, here, a lot more activity during Kyoche than there. As you know. That's <laughs> for sure. Completely <laughs> nothing there. Nothing. Nothing there. <laughs> uh, also, 100% silence. Uh-huh. Literally 100%. Uh-huh. So, uh, uh, it's literally nothing. Then uh, you told me. Uh, Tim Sung San used to say uh, during culture, being bored is the best. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, it's supposed to be the most boring yeah. time of your life ever. <laughs> and I see actually you know, sometimes you know, people here during culture look quite bored. <laughs> so I want to. That's ask, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I want to ask you first if it was that true that Tim Sung San said that. <laughs> Probably it's true. Yeah, boredom what's, is what's a tech. The, what's the intent there? Yeah, well, we teach about the middle path, so if you make it, it, it's not utterly boring, but uh, you just have to strike a balance between excitement and, and boredom. I mean, that's true of everything. You, know, like you want the room to be warm, but not too warm, and you want it to be cool, but not too cool. And you want the kimchi to be hot, but not too hot. And if it's not hot at all, then it's not kimchi. So, <laughs> you know, you're always uh, trying to get on the middle path here, uh, trying to realize your goal. So the goal is to, uh, I guess we could say, wake people up. So how do you do that? So there's all kinds of techniques here. You know, there's pictures, and <laughs> they give me, they scare me. <laughs> And there's statues, and there's mats, and there's clothes, and all this kind of stuff. So somehow you patch all that together to create a um, to create a, a, an environment so that people can have an experience. And not talking is one of those things. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, it's it's. One dimension of the situation that we're trying to create for people is boredom. So that uh, uh, boredom uh, distances you from your desires in a rather unpleasant way. <laughs> uh, your mind starts jumping around. You know? And have you ever done a? If you do a, if you do a hundred day solo retreat, it's really interesting because all these people come to visit you. Except <laughs> it's made by your, your thinking. Because a 100-day solo retreat is really boring. I mean, if you do it. And then all these people come knocking at your door at night. <laughs> you know, you even hear a story about people who kill, kill themselves because somebody came and visited them and told them to do something weird. <laughs> so that's, uh, you know, that's... That kind of boredom is pretty extreme. The boredom here is, I don't know, is it boring here? 
<laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on, like stupid Dharma talks. So, <laughs> so you get. So uh, it's all about w using your wisdom. In this case, Zen Master Sung Sung designs a particular kind of situation so that people can become aware of themselves. That's all. It's not could happen any time. After the Buddha got it, there's a, a, I think it's apocryphal, meaning it's made up, uh, that the Buddha goes home to visit his family after he gets enlightenment. His wife looks at him and says, well, you, you didn't have to go, you didn't have to leave home to get enlightenment. And then the Buddha says, yeah, you're right. And that's true, you didn't, because, well, Layman Pong, he's married, he got enlightenment. So uh, it's about using these, uh, what we call expedient means, you know, this kind of technique to uh, create a situation. But this stuff is not special. Like, this one is really cheap. <laughs> There's nothing special going on here. So don't attach to any of this stuff. But see, you know, see, see what the situation uh, can teach you. And in this case, just do it. It's not very interesting, but it is informative. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> yes? Doubting, uh, doubting would not be. Doubting would not be. Don't know mind. Doubting about the method, or doubting about don't know. I doubt everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's. Uh, um, <coughs> it is about you in one sense. You're the only one that can decide. Nobody can force you to do this. Right? You can, any of us can, I can go, up, go down here and catch the bus after this talk. And you never see me again. So it's about, uh, it's about vow, ultimately. So you're not doing this, you know, to prove to yourself that you're a really strong man. I'm a, right? You're doing it out of love and compassion for the world. Yeah. So it's about, it's always about direction. It isn't about being a hard ass or something. Yeah. I mean, we say hard ass, but what we mean is somebody who's committed enough and under, has the wisdom to understand why they're doing it, so they do it. So nobody would... I mean, when I tell sometimes my friends from the olden days will ask me what I do, and when I tell them what I do, then they say, well, well God, are you stupid? You know, what did you ever get? <laughs> well, of course, you get what you get from life, which is nothing. But it's not about getting anything. It's about realizing what you are and helping the world. So, yeah, I doubted it. <laughs> I'm doubting it right now. <laughs> But that's okay. Doubting it is. Uh, doubting it. Uh, doubt is actually a kind of encouragement for, uh, from my point of view because it's, uh, it's part of the practice. Are you going to do it if your mind is checking and not checking? So you just do it. You know, when you eat, just eat. When you drink, just drink. When you flush the toilet, just flush the toilet. And uh, put the other roll over. <laughs> Turn the paper back. <laughs> it's not special, but we, you know, people get deluded by us. We're always talking about it as if it's special. And the Buddha definitely talked about it as if it's special. You know? But it's not special. It's just the second roll of toilet paper. And that's it. But that's life. You know? Soon everything. How long have human beings been here? 
Lately, they've been saying we've been around now for 200,000 years. So when you think about last week versus 200,000 years, that's quite a difference in time. Right. And uh, civilizations will boast, maybe even the Koreans do, we've been around for 5,000 years. Well, that isn't anything. <laughs> that's like nothing. So people have been living in caves probably over here on the other side of the creek <laughs> for hundreds of thousands of years. And what did they ever get? So it's about just do it just now. Wake up. Recently, they, this is really cool, uh, they found uh, a meal that some Neanderthals had made. So this is the oldest example of a cooked meal. And, and, and the archaeologist said, the Neanderthals had the worst diet you can imagine. <laughs> Meaning, not that it was a bad diet, they obviously lived okay, but you know the way it was prepared and whatever the spices or however it was. This is, that was really terrible. But, you know, it was a, a Neanderthal meal from, I think, I think they think it was from 65,000 years ago. You know, so we think Jesus and Buddha, you know, Buddha 2,600 years ago, Jesus 2,000 years ago. Send Master Sung Sung 50 years ago, something. <laughs> you know, it's like nothing. It isn't even a blink of an eye about how long we've been here doing it. So that leaves us with this moment, because you don't have those moments, right? So this is it. Hello. <laughs> but everybody's afraid what's going to happen when we fly to Japan next week. God. <laughs> yeah. And part of that is your doubt, your fear, your your everything. All those none of those things are good or bad. We just get attached to them. You know? Like fear is natural. It's anger about what you think might happen in the future, right? And desire is natural. That might be something like hope. Hope is a form of desire right? in the future. But it's always right now, so you just have to perceive what these things are and just do it moment to moment to moment to moment. So that's what we're practice, so-called practicing here. But you probably already figured out there is no Buddhist practice. It doesn't exist. We just talk about it. Because it's only just now. So, if that's your practice, how are you going to get anything? But your mind creates all this suffering, and we make suffering for other people, too. You know, how many wars do we have going on now? I think three different wars or something. <laughs> and there you go. Who's going to win? Any other questions? Yes. I have a question uh, about using the internet, social media. Yeah. It's because, you know, living in the world, which is very... Yeah. It, it's, it's our reality. Um, somehow, uh, I feel like I'm lacking some kind of guidance how to use it as a practitioner so that, you know, it doesn't kill my uh, meditation games, so to speak. <laughs> you know, we sit here and now, and you know, floor is yellow, but then we at some point go to our room and we start scrolling, and then everything. Yeah. What's your advice? Uh, I don't know if I have any advice. <laughs> of course, the basic advice is don't attach to it. So you have to be, you have to figure out how to use it. So people are using it to make money, or they're using it to get even with other people, or they're using it to for political reasons or religious reasons or blah, 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 blah. And, and they're even teaching people how to do stuff, right? 
So again, it always boils down to why, you know, what's the reason behind, and then you just do it. So, um, if you watch yourself, you can see, you know, like um, uh, eating rice, okay? So some people like rice, some people don't like rice. Uh, what does eating rice do? And blah, blah, blah. How do you use it to help people? Right? So we serve rice here to help the world. Right? So uh, the same thing is true of, of uh, digital media in all of its different forms. How do you use it to help the world? So you can watch yourself using it. So is that good or not? And how does that transpire? So only you can decide to do something about that. And you might think, oh, I eat too much rice, or maybe you think I don't eat enough rice, I don't have enough energy to even practice hardly, <laughs> right? So your, your own wisdom has to decide what you do any moment about any of those kinds of things. So just before I came here, I was giving a talk to a thing called the, the Zen Cafe. <laughs> and that's done on social media. So there were, I don't know, how many people were there? 20, 20, 30? Yeah, so 30 people. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it was a useful kind of thing. You know? I wasn't trying to pry money out of them anyway. <laughs> so. Uh, so yeah, I would, I would, my, myself tells me, oh, that's that's good. Like thirty people came and, and they were practice. Oh, they did all kinds of things. They chant right, and they sit and they listen to a talk by one of us. Um, on the other hand, you uh, somebody else like, uh, I don't know, <coughs> Elon Musk might be trying to use that same kind of media thing to make money for himself for who knows what reason. So that, that's true of everything that we have or do. So you just have to use your own wisdom to uh, decide what to do. I don't think social media is inherently bad or anything. It's how, how you use it. So that just points towards direction. You know, the most important thing in Buddhism is direction. Why do you do what you do? Moment to moment to moment to moment. Okay? <laughs> I know it's not okay, but <laughs> that's the most I can explain about it. <laughs> Any other questions? So Zen Master Simpson is always teaching, just do it. So, so uh, this just do it me is a, a way, a clever way of saying uh, uh, become one, which is kind of like the Chinese or the Dallas idea of Wu Wei. So uh, if you don't, if you're not attached to the result, then you just do it. So that's the idea. So when we're sitting here so bored, what you're doing is just doing it. So maybe you're bored, maybe you're excited, maybe you're peaceful, maybe you're angry, maybe you're not feeling so good because your back hurts or your knee hurts or your foot's asleep like mine. <laughs> but you just do it. But you want to, as you, you want to have the reason for it to be clear. So just do it doesn't mean just kill somebody. If you want to kill somebody, just kill them. That's not what it means. It means to become one. So any teaching words are wrong. So you have to see, you always have to look at what the behind meaning is. And that comes from wisdom. That's your before thinking mind. Any other questions?
So to me, the fact that people would come here and do this, I just blows my mind. So thank you all for coming and practicing. And just do it. If you just do it, you get you get it. What whatever it is, I don't know what it is, but you get it if you just do it. Thinking, 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 you get a headache. And I bet everybody here has had an existential headache. It's great. <laughs> There's no aspirin for that headache. <laughs> okay, do it. Then you get it. Thank you, everybody.